Our next reader, Nancy K. Pearson, is the author of the poetry collection Two Minutes of Light from Peruvia Press, or Peruvia Press, and has had poems published in numerous literary journals, including the Iowa Review, <coughs> Black Warrior Review, Indiana Review, and Hayden's Ferry Review. Uh, she has won many awards, um, including the Peruvia Press Prize, the Ella Winship Penn New England Award, and recently the Spoon River Anthology Editor's Prize and the Sycamore Review Poetry Prize. Mm -hmm. Nancy's poems are full of breathtaking, harrowing, aching, exhilarating, um, and beautiful terms, and I'm proud to introduce her tonight. Uh, please help me welcome Nancy K. Pearson. <laughs> be continued, two things happen. The oldest daughter went blind, the dog turned a circle and died. There were other things too, but by that time I had cried myself to sleep. I knew a boy who, could, who would not turn his head to the left, and a dog who chased his tail like a fish in a bag day and night and day and night. I worry until you read to me out loud. The sun goes over the edge of the world. This turns me inside out like an orange slice. The meat of my heart fluffed up. For one of light, the eye will shrivel if you tie up your arm too. And so again, you read to me in bed. With hands clasped, they ran a little way, sisters on a prairie. In New York, I followed a blind man whose wrist was tied with string. For 26 miles, two men ran this way. There are people like that, and trees packed to the hardwood now growing leaves. It is quiet when the book slides to the floor. Is everyone familiar with the Waffle House here? I mean, from Tennessee, but yeah, I live on Cape Cod, but there's no Waffle House. It's amazing you gotta be a Waffle House in Massachusetts, right? <laughs> Believer. I never ordered a Libs patty melt. Never ordered anything, not one thing, scattered, smothered, or covered for five years. Every night I soaked my shins in a mop bucket of ice water. Pat Sajak lit up with egg crates. My mother cracked plastic blue trays in the kitchen. I was the best runner in Tennessee. I believed in miracles. Nightly, I fingered the sorrowful mysteries, my pea-sized prayers to a popsicle-shaped Mary with a crack in her head. I'd never seen someone in a coma, never seen a hospital bed wheeled to the middle of a living room like the bathtub we found one August parked in the middle of the tobacco field. I was yelling one night, big money, when my best friend asked me this. If ever she lies stiff in a coma, 
I promised to pluck out her chin hair. <laughs> I believed I caused the storm that scalped the house for a tub. I believed I'd never throw my head back in a lazy chair for a frat boy pouring tequila down my throat. Never would I fall in love with a woman. I ran repeat negative splits. I believed in Joan Benoit and the Flying Scotsman. <coughs> I believed that I would bend over one day, that I could weed out twigs of black hair from someone's swollen face. I believed I would never be my own tweezers. Oh, I forgot to start my timer. How long is it been? <laughs> <coughs> The next poem um, is called Celine's Horse, and just, you probably know this, but Celine was a moon goddess, and she pulled her chariot, uh, the horses pulled the chariot of the moon across the sky, and um, this is after one of the friezes that was taken from the front line, it was hacked out, and it's the head of, of the horse um, that's shown now in the British Museum. Celine's horse for my grandfather James. I asked James, can you feel your dying? Can you feel the water pouring from the hose turn to nothing in the grass? James loved his big wigs. I loved the sweet metallic reek filling my own gas tank. All day the train shuttles heaps of carpet scraps through the wild blue flocks of Georgia, where James' oil truck exploded. When Aristotle said there must be something immovable in the animal for the animal to move, he must have meant James, <coughs> two years in a hospital bed, <coughs> like the woman smoking on the billboard for one whole week only half her mouth open I think of Celine's horse, its marble head, hacked from the Parthenon and shipped to England in manageable pieces. To see it is to see pain bulging in a single vein. James can't smile or blink. Celine's horse, exiled, perched on a plinth in the cold light of a museum, that's one thing. Then there's James, wide-eyed, nostrils flaring. Um, now I'll read a poem from Two Minutes of Light. Um, this is called, bizarre title, Thought Thinking Itself. <laughs> oh, there are so many titles for this one. But this is the one that I find myself, well, we find myself. Suddenly all the things I do not understand discreetly twinkle below the surface. A gristle of duckweed gleams through a thick chop of ice. The green wafer of a fish drifts up, drifts up through a pudding of eelgrass. For ten years I lived mostly on sideboards, and nothing burnished more than my overestimated connection to grief. One year, my roommate consumed small amounts of arsenic for a week. Every day, she stirred it through her warm brown soup. Three blood transfusions later, she lit two portable charcoal grills in the back seat of her Subaru and died. After a month on the psych ward, the doctors discovered I had 15 personalities. I was 20. I made them all up. This is a true story. We reassemble our lives and discover nothing. Just under the skin, a tiny look of green ignites the garment clothing. In the early 1990s, something went terribly wrong. All around me, young women were diagnosed and diagnosed. If I could live my 20s again, I would not sever to untangle. Flight is a single ligament balanced between two forces. 
In the snow, the geese link chains, and I follow their past. There is nothing at the end to unravel. <coughs> This is called typeface allergy. It's about and typeface and it's an allergy. <laughs> Why do I have to explain that? <laughs> Just feels right. You're at a reading, you explain your titles. It says it all. Um, typeface allergy. <laughs> Glassy, pulsating, an open leaf clover in the center of its invisible bell, the reproductive organs forming the round cups of an alphabet, each you holding the delicate matrix of guts, like a typeface. To understand what it means, it becomes transparent. My fingers thread the salt water, and the moon jelly swallows the contents of its heart feels itself with the inebriation of itself, looming absence. Like a letter's counterpunch, the space, the handle, where the shovel unlocks an empty room, for the small yellow bowl of my hand to unravel in, the earth where a lilac now roots beside my best friend's headstone. God separated, separated himself from himself, to let us speak. See how the arms, the sweltering stems, the tentacle cerise surrender their attention to invisible meaning. On our last day, my best friend, breathless, threw a fistful of words to the floor. There, they gestured like fish, spit out to sand. Oh, moon jelly, the soul inside the blue cenote of my body, an aperture, the empty bowl I pack so carefully inside a shoebox shoved under my bed. It once held open on a bedside tray. When words cease to matter, there's all this white space. After Grand Cousy's um, marble sculptures um, called Birds, Birds and Say Space. Um, they have no wings or just no head. You probably know what I'm talking about. Um, oh. That's the inspiration for the title, anyway. Bird in Space. Child, what efficient breath you imitate. Drawing a bird without feet or wings, your chalk breaking the sidewalk. All morning, trees in the city open to speed. Winter has come in the hurry, birds live in. Your mother sits in a metal bathtub inside Walter Reed's Warrior Transition Brigade. Two blocks, and just like that, her legs burned off. Child, you don't understand what should be visible, what science drawing the bird the artist knows, the field marks, the essential red box on the wing, <clears throat> flashing from the dead stubs, the burned over cattails. Warriors sleep on the street, on the blue kicker of garbage trucks. Crack whores, skanks, cum dumpsters. Ignore their scarred hands, their spans of leather spots. Child, draw with your chalk. Carve the cold walk into a highly tuned nervous system. The stick bird, the abstract fledgling round with hunger. The simple glyph speaks by shifting half her head in the sand where the bent grass blows down a song. Child, see how the face surrenders to hollow resolve in the white <coughs> comp 
of rain. Child, hurry. Gently scrub behind the wet ears of your bird in her stone tub. The wounds soften, the hands, the feet dissolve. Uh, that's, that's all. Thank you very much. <laughs>